ride crew. Welcome back to another ride series how-to. Now with this one, we're gonna use an analogy that some of you might have heard. It's called drive for show, putt for dough. Now I know it's a golf analogy and we're talking about bikes. How does that correlate? Well, when you're on a bike, what we like to say at the ride series is, you jump for show, but you turn for dough. Turning is incredibly important. And the best way we have found to teach riders to turn is to use the ground school approach. So we try to remove as many impediments as we can and set it up in a very simple and straightforward manner. Now, turns, are they difficult? Yeah, they can be. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of nuance to it. And I wanna break all of this down using this ground school approach. All right, body position. If your body position isn't proper coming into the turn, I'd argue it's gonna be very difficult for you to get through in the most effective manner. Now, once you do that, you need to think about the often heard body bike separation, but what about your vision? What about your hip placement? All of these things are gonna come into play. And now, we're gonna break them down one by one by one. Are you ready? We're gonna break down turns, and we're excited because today, my main man Carson is gonna help us break the turning technique down. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit back and watch as I walk him through this whole process. Now, before we get too deep into this, there's a couple things we need to think about. Now, the first is gonna be body position. Now, Carson's rocking his brand new Orbea Lofi that he just picked up recently from Mojo Cycles here in Bentonville. You like the bike? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Thumbs up, all right. So, hardtail, full suspension, doesn't really matter. The first thing we wanna think about is body position. So, as I've said over and over again, what's important is hip placement. So, what we wanna do is we wanna have our hips over the bottom bracket. So, pretty much anything we're gonna talk about on the bike, I wanna to try to have my hips over the bottom bracket. It's my center of mass, I can get my center of gravity lower. Now this, this is where a dropper really comes into play. So when we're talking about turning, I want to try to get as low as I can over the center of the bike. This isn't open to interpretation, this is fact. With that, my center of mass can get lower. So the first thing is, I want to have my hips right here. Second thing is, what are we doing? What are we working on right now? Turns, we're working on turns. So if I look at my bike and I look at this meaty Maxxis Asagai right here. Right here, these are the rolling knobs. These things right here, you guessed it, turning knobs. So again, not my opinion, actual scientific fact. The bike needs to be leaned over enough for those turning knobs to actually do their job. So if you're not getting the bike leaned over, I'd argue you're nowhere near turning effectively. Now, all that being said, how do we do that? Well, of course, we start with the hip position, but the next thing we're gonna think about is what we call body-bike separation, bike-body separation. You've heard it multiple times. What that means is getting the bike away from your body. We need to get the bike leaned over, but we need to maintain that center of mass over the bottom bracket, right? So, how else are we gonna do that? Pedal position. So this is one there's a couple schools of thought. I'm gonna give you my opinion, and this is what we teach at the Ride Series. So the Ride Series, the TRS standard, is gonna be inside pedal up. And the rationale behind this is, I wanna lean the bike over, the inside pedal's up to avoid any pedal strikes, but I can also stand on that outside pedal. And what that's gonna do is, that's gonna give me a platform to then keep my hips over the bottom bracket. So look at this right here. You see what I'm doing, Carson? I'm lined up right here. Look at where the seat is in relation to my hips. It's on the complete other side. So I have the bike leaned over, the side knobs are biting, my weight is still over the bottom bracket. And if for some reason, if something happens, if I lose traction, I can just slide, I can just skate with this. All my weight's on the outside. If I go like this, what happens when I lose traction? I'm just gonna fall over. Now, as far as my feet go, the inside pedal's up, I have no weight on it. So if at any point I get spooked and I need to clip out and get my foot out, I can do that very easily. I'm not worried about that. So now, what we need to do is, we need to apply that to our turning drill. Okay, so 
<clears throat> we have our cones set up, pretty basic turning drill. What I've done is I've taken a couple of small orange cones and I've placed them six paces apart. And then what I've done is I've staggered them by roughly a pace. So not too crazy. And the idea here is I wanna create constant arcs. So I'm not gonna go super fast through this. I'm just gonna go nice and easy. So what I do is I roll in, not a whole lot of speed, but I wanna get that inside pedal up. Okay, and then I start getting that body bike separation. See my pedals moving back, transitioning turn to turn. Okay, so now we're gonna start breaking down the pieces to this. Entry, so when I come in, I see my gate. What I wanna do is I wanna have high eyes. My vision needs to be up, obviously. I need to see where I'm going. So high eyes, and when I come in, first turn is which way? It's to the right. So if I have a right-hand turn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna lift that inside pedal up. So you're gonna come in, you're gonna lift the inside pedal up. I'm gonna be ready. Okay, I'm gonna be out of the saddle, inside pedal up, I'm gonna come in, get that first right-hand turn, and as I make that right-hand turn, I'm gonna rotate my pedals backwards to get the inside up. Now, this is up to you. You can rotate backwards, you can go forwards, you can go forward to the right and backward to the left. Totally up to you, you do whatever you want, okay? Rotate your pedals how you dig, man. But you need to do that. So you need to find something that can help you rotate those pedals back so the inside pedal is up, okay? Now, once you do that, you wanna think about making those arcs between those turns, okay? So nice, smooth, fluid movements, turn to turn to turn. So what I need to do is keep my hips over the bottom bracket, lean that bike over, and get those side knobs to bite. Bounce from turn to turn to turn. It's just that simple. You ready to give it a try? All right. So roll in, inside pedal up, inside pedal up, good. Pedals, rotate the pedals, lean the bike, don't steer it, lean it. Good, all right dude, pretty good first run through. Now, what I want you to think about this time is, you're steering the bike with the bars. Don't steer the bike. What you need to do is lean. The more you lean, that's how you're gonna get your turn. So what you need to think about is, as I come in, I can always back that out. Okay, so come in, lean, lean, lean. That's the idea, just think lean, don't think steer. Make sense? All right, let's give another try. Good, inside pedal up, lean that bike. There you go, lean it, lean it, lean it. All right, doing good, showing some progress. Now to reiterate, a couple different steps we're looking at here. First is pedal position. Okay, so we need to get that inside pedal up. Doing really good with that. Finding the way to rotate, if it's forward, if it's back, doesn't matter. Now we wanna think in this scenario about making those constant arcs. So the idea here is to teach people what you wanna do is get the bike leaned over, get that bike body separation. And we do this with these constant radius turns. That's where the arcs come into play. So the idea is, don't steer like this, lean. The more you lean, the sharper you're gonna turn. So you slowly build up to that. Now at the same time, you need to think about your ability to move the bike side to side. So if I'm hips over the bottom bracket in that neutral position, I have the most ability to move the bike. What starts to happen is people, they creep their hips back. The more I creep my hips back, the more I unweight the front tire, which is the wheel of influence, and I don't have the ability to get traction up front. So it's very important that you think about all these things. Now, another piece of this equation is to think about stem length and bike setup. So not a lot of people think about this. If you're washing out in turns, it might be you don't have enough stem, you don't have enough weight forward. Maybe your stack is too high. Maybe if you go a little bit longer stem, you'd go from here to here, and you'd get more weight out in front over the bike. Make sense? All right, let's work on it a little more. There you go. Okay, layer on top of layer on top of layer. So what we've done now is we're still working that body bike separation. 
And the idea is to explain, you're not gonna get better turning the handlebars, okay? The steering input, it's not gonna come from that. It's gonna come from leaning the bike. The more you lean the bike, the tighter it's gonna turn. And we're gonna show you, we're gonna do a little experiment. So I'm gonna come through, and I'm gonna come through this last turn, and I'm gonna make a constant radius turn, which means I'm gonna give it input. So lean the bike at a specific angle and follow that all the way around. What Carson's gonna do is he's gonna drop the cone on that white line where my tires come through. Then I'm gonna go through a second time and I'm gonna start that constant radius turn, but what I'm gonna do is add in a tiny bit more angle and you're gonna see the outcome. You ready? Okay, I'm leaning the bike, ready? Go ahead and drop it right where I went through. Okay, now I'm gonna go through again. I'm gonna add in some more input. Inside pedal up, working through the gates. Inside pedal, more angle. So more lean on the bike, much sharper radius with my turn. So again, important to understand, the more you lean the bike over, the more you're gonna turn, the more the side knobs are gonna bite. But in order to do that effectively, body position has to be very precise. And this is where that nuance starts to come in. All right, making sense? All right, let's move on. All right, so we're starting to get the gist of the bike body separation, the lean, and how we steer by leaning. Now the next thing is think about timing. So there's only three options when it comes to timing, okay? You can be on time, eh, it's okay, right? You can be late. You know what happens when you're late, Carson? You're fired. Don't be late. The other option, the one we wanna go with is, be early, always be early. So what does that mean in this scenario right here? It's pretty simple, okay? We're gonna pretend we're hovering in a drone right above this, and we're looking straight down on all these perfectly spaced gates. We wanna draw a line in the exact center point. You got it, can you picture it? Okay, now I want you to take that line and move it back a tiny bit. We just became early. So the idea is, I wanna get into these turns earlier than that center point. Because what that's gonna do is it's gonna help me flatten the turns out, carry more speed in, carry more speed out. It's also the safest, because if I have a problem mid-turn and I lose traction, I don't slide out and go right into a tree. Make sense? Here's what it looks like. Okay, so <clears throat> what does early entry mean? Well, first is we wanna use all of our trails. So the way we have it set up, the cones are spaced about, let's call it four feet wide. So if I'm coming in and I'm making a right-hand turn, well, what I wanna do is when I set up, first thing is obviously my eyes are way up, but I'm gonna set out as far left as I can. So as I roll in, I'm basically on the outer edge of what the trail is. And that means now I can start to get in early, meaning I'm gonna turn down here and get in right here, okay? Early, on time, late. So if I come in way out here and drop down right like this, start my turn, get my rotation back, I can then come down right here. So see that? So now I'm coming down around this point in the turn. So I make my apex a little bit early and get in right here. So now I'm leaned over. If something happens, inside pedals up. Okay, I got the bike lean. Hips are straight over the bottom bracket. If I lose traction right now, what's gonna happen is the bike will slide out, but guess what? I can still maintain this turn if need be. If I come in on that normal line and come out here and I have a problem, well now what happens is I run right into this right here. Hopefully it's just grass, but it could be a tree, you never know. So that's why it's important to be early. And another thing to think about too is, I can always slow this down. Okay, so if I come in super early, and Carson did that in one of his first runs, if I know I'm too early, slow it down a tiny bit. Then I'm back where I need to be. It's that simple. Just take some time. Okay, nice and early. Turn in, turn in. Good, inside up, inside up, inside up. Nice.
Okay, so we've broken it down pretty simply. Decent amount of layers, a little bit of nuance, but it's entry into the corner, it's proper pedal position, vision, obviously, and then bike body separation as you rotate the pedals back. The idea is to stay smooth. Now this setup, anybody can do anywhere. You can keep it super simple. Now the last piece of this is where it gets a little bit more complex. The apex or the center point of that turn, we wanna to try to get as much traction as we can. So now we're gonna introduce loading into the turn. So if we're looking at it from the back, we're seeing this bike body separation. Now, what you're gonna see as you look at it through the back is, I'm gonna to start to load that turn. So with side to side, we're gonna now add in up and down into this. Gets a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more difficult, but it comes with time. All right, this is where we start to bring it home. The final piece is load into that turn. So as I come in, I really wanna weight that outside pedal, drop my hips down. All right, there you go. Another how-to in the books. Hope we got turns broken down pretty simply for you. It's not easy. It's gonna take some time. Uh, try to rationalize everything that's involved. Uh, think about the steps. Find a spot where you can practice, and you can start small in a parking lot like this. Um, drop some cones, drop some water bottles. Uh, I like to start roughly six paces apart, staggered a little bit, but that's how you can make it a little bit more difficult tighten them up, stagger them a little bit more. Either way, it doesn't matter. After that, you can bring it back over to the grass. So the things to think about, obviously, vision. You gotta look ahead. The further you look ahead, the slower things are gonna come at you. Second is pedal position. You gotta get that inside pedal up and really work on that transfer turn to turn. The next point, body bike separation. You gotta get that bike leaned over. You wanna have your hips on the other side of the seat. You really wanna get those side knobs to bite. On top of that, it's just nuance. You know, the timing, loading in mid-turn. It's things that will slowly come. But what I can tell you with an almost certain guarantee is you'll never master turns. That's part of what makes them so fun. Now, I'd love to see you at a Ride Series MTB Skills Clinic because using the ground school approach, we really focus a lot of time on this movement and that instant feedback is absolutely incredible. Really helps you make progress in the moment. But if that's not an option for you, there's still hope. What you can do is click the Patreon link down below. We actually have a level where you could submit a video of you doing turns, drops, lifts, heck, even jumps. And what I'll do is I'll take that, I'll break it down, and give you as much feedback as possible to help you progress remotely. So on top of that, if you wanna rock one of these cool shirts or maybe even an RD hat, the link down below to the store where you can score that merch. Also, you're gonna get the opportunity to grab a limited edition monthly RD shirt. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Now it's time for Carson and I to go hit some more practice on turns. So Carson, there's only one thing left to say, bro. Peace, Peace out, out dumpers. dumpers.